Now to India, where the High Court has ruled the practice of Muslim men verbally divorcing their wives by simply saying divorce three times is unconstitutional. An Indian interpretation of Islamic law has run side by side with India's constitutional laws since independence in 1947. But that hasn't run smoothly with regular challenges in civil courts. Even many Indian Muslims have opposed what's known locally as triple talaq, saying it's against Islamic law. Although the issue has been long-running in Indian society, previous attempts at getting the practice annulled has failed. The court said that the practice of men divorcing their wives by uttering talaq thrice for a second marriage will no longer be valid. A proper suit will have to be filed and it's only after an order is issued on the suit that the divorce will be considered complete. We respect the uh, verdict given by the Honorable High Court but at the same time we also have the full constitutional right to appeal against the court verdict if we are not satisfied. The All India Muslim Personal Law Board's legal committee will study the verdict and observation and then it will file its appeal against uh, the said verdict. Let's get more on that for you. Advita Kala is an author and columnist writing on politics and women's issues. She joins us now from New Delhi. Advita Kala, what does this mean for Muslim women there? It's a huge victory. You know, we've been uh, sort of uh, seeing a lot of this uh, this surge really in India in the last year, you know, when it came to the Right to Pray campaign that has been very active here, which included uh, Hindu women and Muslim women really demanding access to play, prayers, places of worship where uh, they didn't have it. So this has really, you know, there's been a churn, you know, a lot of Indian women, in this case, Muslim women, it's a huge victory for them. Uh, they uh, recently, about two weeks ago, got access to a dargah, which is a place of worship, uh, which was uh, denied to them, and now uh, this comes uh, so quickly after that. So I think this is a great time for Indian women, and especially for Indian Muslim women. What does it mean for Indian Muslim men? I'm not talking about Indian Muslim men who want a divorce for the sake of getting a divorce, but say where there are genuine problems in the marriage and two people should just go their separate ways. Well, I mean, we do have divorce courts, we have divorce lawyers, we have all those practices. I mean, our Article 44 of the Indian Constitution declares that we are a secular state and we must work towards uniform law. I think that's essential because we're a very diverse country. Uh, we need to promote a national identity. We need to promote equality among genders, among people. And this is a step in that direction. I don't see how it would be inconvenient for them. What you have happening right now, and a lot of cases have come to the fore, have been cases of women being divorced over Facebook over Skype by registered post. Those kind of things are absolutely unacceptable. What well, literally somebody can divorce or could until now divorce somebody else by dialing them up on FaceTime or WhatsApp and saying these three words three times? Pretty much. I mean, those are the kind of reports that have come in for this. And this is why uh, you have had women uh, go out there and really challenge this in the courts. Because, you know, uh, we have a complicated society. We have a lot of entrenched uh, patriarchy, which women have to fight. So even if this gets through the courts, there's another case pending in the Supreme Court of India. Uh, it's, it takes a lot for social attitudes to change. I mean, we've seen that with dowry, you know, which was outlawed. And it still persists in our society. So this is really just one step. Big country, big population, big rural population. In those outlying areas that are maybe quite insular in a way, we, we've all travelled through them, of course. I mean, how do you make sure that the judiciary or the police or the local government applies this properly? That has always been a problem, you know, when it comes to any issue, even when it comes to child marriage. I mean, we have some amazing figures even today when it comes to child marriage across religious communities in India. I think uh, the problem really is that women aren't aware of their legal rights. And this is something that governments have to take very, very seriously. In this case, what has happened is that the Prime Minister Narendra Modi has spoken of this uh, very publicly and openly and displayed the political will to ensure that this kind of equality Quality comes into our legal system. So one is more hopeful in this occasion because uh, what happened back in the 80s was that triple talaq was challenged back then as well, but then the government of the day at that time uh, reversed that order. So, uh, you know, there wasn't really political will. You had uh, politicians working on vote bank policies and not really on what stands for equality. Unlike what happened in the 1950s with the Hindu laws, which went through a huge set of reforms uh, heralded by the prime minister at that time, which was Jawaharlal Nehru, and really gave uh, inherit things like marriage rights, inheritance rights, 
to women. So that kind of reform needs to come here as well. Should there be a backup system to go with this new legislation in as much as, you know, do you need some sort of support mechanism so you can get the word out there to these women who would maybe like to do it, but if you're a Muslim woman born into a certain kind of area and then you end up in a certain kind of marriage, you are instantly disadvantaged, so you might want to do this and do it properly, but you don't have the support network either bolstering you sort of when it comes to taking the decision or literally giving you the finances and the financial aid because divorce is expensive. And if you're a, a stay at home mother and you're looking after the kids, you've got no place to go. I think one thing we have to remember with this is that this has come from Muslim women. What's presently happening is that a lot of them have been less destitute, have been left caring for children, and uh, really abandoned by the men b due to this practice. So there is a there is this huge churn within the within the Muslim women community. So I think I always say this, you know, in India we ha sort of have an oral history of feminism, and that works very effectively. I think you will see this really travel very quickly. But yes, the other aspect is social support and support from families, because in India families play, play a huge role, as well as of course men in your life so I think I think those factors need to come in definitely there is political will in terms of who's in power uh, politics are already playing being played around this as can be expected but I think we have to get out of that space and really look at it from the point of view of the women. Hi Rita Carla there in New Delhi great to talk to you thanks for your time here on Al Jazeera. Thank you.